All right, good morning, everybody. We are taking a step away from fractions for a little bit. Get ready for lesson 83. We're diving back into geometry. Today, we're talking about properties of geometric solids, which basically means shapes in 3D. So over on page 540 of your book, like most of the geometry, the vocabulary is so important. So if you had a square drawn up in 3D where all four sides of the square are the same length and made it three-dimensional, that's going to be called a cube. Any rectangle done up in 3D is going to be called a rectangular prism. If you have a square floor and triangular walls that meet at the top, that's a pyramid. This guy over here that looks like a soup can, he is referred to as a cylinder. A three-dimensional ball in geometry world is referred to as a sphere. And if we had a floor of a circle and it pointed up on top, that is referred to as a cone. All these can be found on page 540 of your book for easy reference. Some more very important vocabulary right now. We start off with what's called a vertex. And the plural is kind of tricky. Those are vertices. And that means the corners. The face, that's the flat surface or wall. The edge is the line where two faces meet. And the base is the bottom face or the bottom wall of any geometric solid. And a little bit more review. Remember these two words, congruent and similar. Anytime you're dealing with shapes, they're probably going to throw these terms at you, so we better reacquaint ourselves one more time. Congruent means exactly the same size and shape. Similar means exactly the same shape, but different sizes. So we might end up with some questions like this. How many faces does this shape have? So if you remember, faces are the flat surface or walls. We are looking at how many walls. So we know this is in three dimension and it is rectangular. So you're gonna have the front wall, the right hand wall, the back wall, and the left wall, right? So that's four so far. The tricky part kids forget is adding on the top wall or face and the bottom wall or face. So if we're counting faces, there would be six faces on this rectangular prism. How many edges does this shape have? If you remember, edges are the lines where two faces meet. So if I was going to count how many edges this shape, I would have to count only the straight lines right now. Don't get confused. So we'll start off here going one, two, three, four, There's five, six, there is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and lastly, 12. So how many edges does this guy have? I believe he has 12 edges or 12 lines. How many vertices does this shape have? And if you remember, vertices are the corners, right? So all this information, again, can be found on page 504 of your book. We got a 
back right corner over here and a back left corner over here, a front left corner and a front right corner, but don't forget the bottom side, right? You have a bottom left corner back here, a bottom right corner over here, a front right corner, and a bottom left corner, right? So that's making a grand total of eight vertices or eight corners. Here we have to go and name one pair, remember. If they're asking for a pair, that means they want two parallel segments. So let's go and take a look right now. What do we have for parallel? Parallel means lines, rays, or segments that never touch. So there's actually quite a few to choose from here. I'm going to use this guy here. Segment AB looks like he is running parallel to segment CD, isn't he? So the trickiest part about this, I think, is writing them. I got to make sure two capital letters. So I'll say A, B, and I either got to have the word segment in front of it or the abbreviation. Remember, the abbreviation for segment is just a line with no arrows. Segment A, B is parallel to segment C, D, right? So two capital letters and the segment abbreviation on top of it. There were lots of them. I could have said segment CA is parallel to segment DB or segment DB is parallel to segment HF. There were lots and lots of parallel segments to choose from in this one. Here we have to go and name a pair of perpendicular segments. So let's go ahead and find something that's perpendicular. That means they're going to intersect, which means touch, and form right angles. So I like to start off right here. I'm going to start with segment DH. And he is touching something that's going to form a right angle. I could say segment DB. I could say segment HF or I could say segment GH. So I think that's the one I'm going to choose. So we'll go segment G to H is the one forming right angles, right? So remember, two capital letters, capital D and a capital H, and I either need the word segment in front of it, or I can abbreviate it with the segment symbol. And then I have segment GH, otherwise known as segment HG as well, right? So again, two capital letters and the segment symbol on top of it, or the word segment written in front of it. How many congruent faces does this shape have? If you remember, congruent means the exact same size and shape. And faces means the wall, right? So congruent faces looks to me like this bottom face or bottom wall would be a square. But every other wall on this pyramid would appear to be congruent, right? Because that base is a square. So I would have a wall going up along this side, a wall going up along this side, a wall going up along this side, and a wall going up along this side. So how many congruent faces? You have four of the congruent triangles. The square at the base would not be congruent. And that is the end. I highly recommend having your book out. Open up to page 540. It'll help you tremendously with the Socrative quiz. And good luck.